Okay, moving on to the west, Saskatchewan. The riders have had, obviously, some... They lost in twos, and now Bag has an injury. So what does that do to their chances? Well, you know, they, uh, they're they a football team that has always overcome the odds, right? They're, they're a team that, that has done it with character. Uh, they've done it with smoke and mirrors at times. They've done it with the big play, uh, brilliant play, uh, smart coaching. I mean, they, they just find ways. And now they're going to have to do it again, and they're going to have to do it without a lot of their, their, their character guys. You know, they, they, they took a big step backwards two years ago when Eddie Davis retired because he was one of those big character guys. And uh, and now you got you lose bag and, and Fantus in one fell swoop. Yeah, you got a you got a head coaching change. Um, and uh, you know there's there's a lot of changes there. Chris Darka uh, is gone, another character guy. Um, uh, so you know, Chicken Bag a couple of years ago they're gone. So that that team's gone through a huge overhaul, and 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 it's, it's going to be very interesting to me to see how they they respond to that. But I tell you, I tell you, Durant has got to have a guy that he can throw the ball to on second and long. And, uh, you know, Dressler is, is an incredible player, uh, but given his given his size, Fantuz was just a guy that Durant always knew he could count on and to get open and, and to be and to be seen. And uh, they have to find a replacement for him or that football team is going to really struggle. The Eskimos, another team that almost has nowhere to go but up. <laughs> well... That, that, and that's not saying much. Uh, uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, that, I mean, that's going to be a football team that I am really going to enjoy watching this year, only to see whether or not it's like watching a train wreck or watching a miracle uh, unfold before your eyes. Uh, you know, Eric Tillman's come in and, and in typical Eric fashion has decided to completely uh, revamp the squad. And I can tell you that that normally does not work in the CFL. Uh, when you turn over your starter by 50%, uh, 40, 50 percent uh, in the CFL, you, you, you might start coming together and gelling by the end of the year, but you're not making the playoffs. Uh, but they've got Ricky Wright, who's one of the premier quarterbacks uh, in the league, and when they ha- as long as they have him, they've got a chance. But there are, it's so difficult to find a group of guys uh, who uh, to come together who haven't played a lot together, a lot of guys who haven't played the CFL, and expect them to produce. I don't care how great your scouting is. You know, what t- kind of talent you find, it takes weeks and weeks uh, before you get to the point where you can start playing anything like a veteran who's been in the league for a long time. So I am not going to be the least bit surprised if the Edmonton Eskimos struggle mightily uh, this year. But uh, I would love to be proven wrong because it would, it would once again show that Eric Tillman is one of the best GMs uh, in the game. What about the signing of Kerry Joseph? I, you know, it's kind of a non-signing as far as I'm concerned. You know, uh, yeah, he's, it, it'll be good to have a guy like that uh, as insurance, uh, better than the alternative, having some, some raw rookie who hasn't got a clue what he's doing out there. But, you know, Ricky Ray was to actually get hurt, and the, and the season was to be riding on, on Joseph's shoulders. I, I don't see it happen. Uh, he's been out of football for a long time. He wasn't playing well when he left the game. Uh, you know, I'm sure his veteran uh, uh, leadership will, will be a plus in the locker room. But I, I don't I, – I, be very surprised if he winds up being much of an asset on the field. We have Calgary. Speaking of young, raw quarterbacks who have come on the record and said that they really like what they're seeing in their rookie uh, quarterbacks, including, you know, the Canadian Brad Zanopoli. So what do you see the Stamps doing this year? Well, I'd love to see Brad get a chance to play, uh, even dress, frankly. Uh, that would be fantastic to see a couple of Canadian quarterbacks back in the league. Um, uh, you know, the Stamps are, are, are a solid football team, and, and there are times, though, where uh, their, uh, I think their, their attitude, their chemistry uh, has hurt them. And uh, they lost a couple of cornerbacks uh, uh, in Browner and Anderson who were a big part of that sort of chip-on-your-shoulder swagger thing, but also a couple of guys who I think may have been a distraction at times for that football team. And so... Uh, but you can't replace that kind of talent overnight. They, they're, they're, they're the two of the top quarterbacks in the CFL, and they're gone. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that team uh, sort of comes together in, in the absence of those two personalities and those two and those and, and really very talented players. Uh, but you know, again, you've got Henry Burris. Uh, you you got to win the football game, and, and he, like Ricky Ray, like Anthony Cavio, is very good at staying healthy. 
And so I'd be surprised if we if they have to rely too much on the young quarterbacks that they're grooming. But uh, I think it's really a question of not receiving core, uh, you know, being able to Kenyon Rambo and Nick Lewis and, and, and those guys being able to continue to dominate as they have been. And if Burris stays healthy, they'll be fine. And finally, the team that is hosting, you know, the Grey Cups. The Grey Cups in Vancouver. Vancouver has, or the BC Lions have said that they want to be there. All right, they want to represent the West. Do they have a shot at it? Well, that's on the football team like Winnipeg that played very well down the stretch last year. Uh, they were a fun team to watch. And, uh, uh, you know, they've they, 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 they lost uh, Giannis Davis out, obviously. Uh, that guy looks like he's spent a lot of time in jail. And he was an exciting, <laughs> exciting, exciting part of their special teams and a big part of their, their offense. So, you know, I think that's too bad. But uh, that's a football team that uh, – did, did improve by leaps and bounds last year, and I, I'm looking forward to watching them. I mean, I, I used to love wa- I loved watching them last year. I mean, that was a team that I looked forward to seeing because you just weren't sure what you're going to get. And and I'm interested to see if they can build on last year um, uh, because they, uh, yeah, they have a chance if they play consistently this year the way they played at the end of last year, they have a chance at, at hosting uh, that great cup. If there are any players like coming out of the draft that you think might make are there any ones that you think might make the team? Any team in the well, CFL? There's, there's guys that'll make the team, you know, but uh, it, it's pretty unusual for any draft pick to, uh, to, to 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 make a difference on offense or defense. I mean, there are, there are certainly guys who can come out and play special teams, uh, but uh, it's an awfully big jump up. And uh, you know, I remember when I got drafted, I I, uh, I wound up playing in my first couple of games. Uh, because guys were hurt, and, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And, <laughs> and Matt Dunnigan, too, in my first ever pass in my first ever game, and and uh, and then I and then I basically sat on the reserve list for the rest of the year, uh, basically trying to learn the game and, and learn what it, what it is to be a pro. And that's uh, that's what these guys are, are experiencing right now in training camp. They are getting a huge wake-up call as they realize for the first time that pro football uh, isn't what they thought it was. Uh, so you know what? They're, they're they're just doing well. They can make the squad, play special teams, and get better at their position. Any big news stories that you think we're going to be should be looking out for? Well, you know, obviously cutdowns uh, are going to be coming up preseason. You know, TSN is covering the pre seven of the eight preseason games, which it's never done before. So we're going to have a chance and a, and, and a rare opportunity to, to actually watch some of the some of the new guys that the teams are bringing in. So. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to because I don't get to see preseason games that no one in this country ever has. And uh, now we get to see uh, whether or not anybody's found that diamond in the rough. So that's the exciting part of this year. The exciting part of this time of year is watching to see whether some, some punt returner who just turns your head or a receiver who's consistently making great catches. Uh, is there a quarterback who runs the offense smoothly and, and all of a sudden vaults from – being a third or fourth stringer to being a second stringer. Uh, that's what this time of year is all about, and I encourage people to tune into the preseason and, and, and check out for the Stars of Tomorrow. And which, what's the one uh, game that won't be covered? Uh, it's a Saturday game. This Saturday game, Toronto and Hamilton are playing, and, and that's the one that's not playing because there's a conflict. Uh, so it is airing on, on TSN radio, uh, but there is there is something else scheduled uh, on TSN uh, 1 and 2 on Saturday afternoon. I don't remember what it was, so that's why they couldn't carry that. But I believe that the plan is for next year they'll make sure that the schedule works to cover all eight games. Can you see any other team the game works as well? I mean, I know I think every team's had at least one open uh, practice during training camp, and most of them have had, like, an inter-squad game by now, too. Haven't they? Uh, you know, it, it, every, well, inter-squad games, I, I don't think happen all that much anymore. I mean, just, They'll sometimes call it that, but all it is is a glorified scrimmage. Uh, so um, uh, every team in training camp tries to do things to, to attract the fan attention. Uh, and, you know, whether they have autograph days or they have a, they, they hold the practice in, in some other place uh, that's more centralized, um, you know, there, there's all kinds of things that, that every team does and, uh, and, needs, and needs to do. Anything that can bring the game closer to the fans – uh, hey, if I was a big CFL fan uh, and, and only went to games, get out and see a practice. You know, it, it, will, uh, it will blow your mind just to sort of see how, what guys do to get themselves ready to play the game. Another chance to get to see people that you may not be seeing on the field. Well, 
you know, see the, see the Henry Burrises and the Anthony Cavills and the, and the Kenyon Rambles up close and, 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 and how they practice and their work ethic, but also see those young, those young rookies and, and, and see if you can pick out who, who might actually have a chance to make the team. That's, that's great fun. It's a lot of fun, and, I mean, this has to be the most accessible of the professional sports leagues. Uh, no question about that. That's what the league prides itself on. And, uh, you know, if you start paying everybody millions of dollars, I suspect CFL players to become like everybody else. But, you know, <laughs> everyone's got their feet firmly planted on the ground because, uh, hey, we're just uh, we're all working working guys just like everybody else. And so uh, uh, while, uh, while we take a lot of pride in, in what we do, uh, where we also don't forget that we're, uh, we, you know, we put our pants on one leg at a time just like everybody else. Are you on Twitter? Uh, well, I, I will be when the season starts. Apparently, that's, ah. been, uh, that's been uh, that's the plan. Ah, so you so you will join the ranks of I was going to say because it's also an amazingly accessible league fan wise in terms of the number of players who are you know on Twitter and on other social media sites and they're regularly commentating. So you can get like a day by day, blow by blow, of what's been going on at training camp from a player on your favorite team or players on every team. It's going to be a great season. We're looking forward to it. We'll probably talk to you at some point middle of the season. All right. Well, check back in then. This has been Jen talking with Jock Clowney on the CFL training camp for RouGeRadio.com.